Good morning. Welcome to worship on this grand and glorious day. Let's look at a few of the announcements. Uh, cups, the cups are still there and available, so you can pick up yours up uh, in commemoration of our 90th anniversary. Also, there is a quantity of books there, The Light Through the Window, which is the book about our stained glass windows. And if you'd like uh, to get a copy of that, I'm sure there's enough there now for everybody to be able to, to uh, get one. If we run out, we'll just order more. It's that simple. Okay, men's breakfast <clears throat> will be next Saturday at the uh, log cabin, seven o'clock, some men plan to come and join us for that. And then the big announcement is our prayer rally, which is coming up in two weeks. Last year, you remember, we had the prayer rally for our farmers and ranchers. <clears throat> we went to the fairgrounds, we had a, had a good time, good, uh, good uh, fellowship there, and a nice group of people. But we've decided to move it to the church uh, this uh, year because of the uh, issues that we had with the heat uh, and also a lot of the climbing of the stairs, you know, to get up into the stands at the fairgrounds and the convenience of the restrooms, which were not close. And uh, so here we'll have a, a comfortable setting and uh, have all of the amenities that are needed for that service. So the publicity is uh, out and uh, you will probably be hearing some uh, announcements on the radio and you know, seeing some ads in the newspaper, uh, talk it up. And we hope to have a great turnout from our own congregation as well as congregations across the community as we come together to pray for our farmers and our ranchers. We have some people scheduled to share during that service and uh, it'll be a, just be a wonderful time and a wonderful support for our farmers and ranchers. Okay, we'll uh, have our reading of scripture now, right now. If uh, Brother Kenny, you want to come and lead us in our opening scripture. Good morning. If you'd open your hymnals to number 280. Two eight zero. And um, I'll read the light print, you'll read the dark. It begins forever with Christ. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And I will go and prepare, prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me. There will be no more death, no mourning or crying or pain. For the old order of things has passed away. I am making everything new. There will be no more night. There will there will not need the lamp of, of a excuse me. There will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun, for the Lord God will give them light, and they will reign forever and ever. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give everything according to what He has done. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Now, if you'd all please stand, we'll sing, we'll work till Jesus comes.
got that third verse. <laughs> How many of you was that new to? Yeah. Huh? Well, my early service was new to everybody. Here, almost everybody knows it, so, except Ken. <laughs> I did. <laughs> okay, well, while we're all standing, let's just turn and make each other feel welcome this morning. <laughs> That just shows it goes on whether I'm here or not. <laughs> Father, thank you for this uh, wonderful fellowship that we enjoy together. And we just pray now that as we give up our tithes and offerings, it will be a blessing uh, to your kingdom and to those who give. And bless the uh, praise team as they share in song. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.
let's affirm our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the one holy universal Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the dead, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. As we continue our time of worship together, we go to the Lord in prayer. I just wanted to uh, say it's good to have Elaine in our service today. She had uh, surgery. She's just uh, looking like a brand new person. And uh, we're thankful that she's doing so well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you today for the blessings that we enjoy being part of the family of God. You are an awesome God, and Jesus is a wonderful Savior. And Father, today as we are here, we want for us to be able to truly experience worship, to receive from you as we give to you our worship a blessing and encouragement and strength for our life every person father who has come through the doors of this church this morning and is engaged in this worship service has their own special unique needs and father today we just come to you as we are body of Christ, depending upon your Holy Spirit to work in our hearts and lives today, individually. We bless you and thank you for your ability to do that. And Father, we bring the special needs that we have. First of all, thank you that Elaine is doing well and she has been able to be in worship with us this morning. We continue, Father, to lift up Jana Keller to you in prayer. Lord, touch this dear lady. We pray for Alan Lycom. Lord, you'll be with him. We lift up Clara Shaneman, Father, as she is uh, uh, very weak, Lord, at this point. And Lord, we, we just know that your love is with her. We just pray you will just touch her and be with her family as they are there. Uh, in the nursing home with there with her during these days of her life we pray for Harvey Rupp today that you will touch him Lord we lift up our uh, church ministries to you today and we thank you as we're getting into the into the uh, fall season now and things will be uh, kind of starting up again with the Awana and the ladies uh, study circle and different things Lord that we'll be doing in ministry we just ask that you will bless. We pray, 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 Father, for the prayer rally coming up in a couple of weeks. We pray, Father, that you will lay, up, lay it upon the hearts of people across our community to come together, to, to unite together in prayer on behalf of our farmers and our ranchers, Lord, because they need your, they need your help and they need your strength. We depend upon their uh, work for the economy of our valley, Lord. We just pray that it'll be a great time as we minister together at the prayer rally. We, Father, we want to lift up our country to you today. We thank you for uh, this nation. We are blessed, so blessed, each one of us to be a part of the United States of America. And Father, we pray that we will not take one 
ounce of it for, for granted, but we will every day be thankful for what we have been given. Be with our leaders, protect them and use them, Father. We pray for a, we pray for a spirit of renewal to take place in our country that men and women will come to know the love of Jesus Christ and how that bonds us together and helps us to do great things. Be with our military men and women. We pray that you will protect them and keep them as they, as they serve our country. Thank you for our veterans, Lord. Just bless them. And Father, today as we are um, having uh, this weekend, this Labor Day weekend, honoring the work that goes on across our country we thank you father that that there are more people uh, more and more people that are finding jobs and that uh, the economy seems to be on an upswing we praise you for that we pray father that you will be with all of our workers across this land and we pray that they will truly find fulfillment in their work in the work that they do lord we pray for our local community be with our county commissioners and our uh, city uh, councils, Lord, be with our policemen and our firemen, our emergency medical people. We thank you for them and for the service that they give to our community. And we pray, Father, for our schools, for our teachers, administrators, students, all of the school. Lord, we just pray that you will, we will work there and be in the hearts and lives of people that are uh, working in our educational system. Father, as we continue our time of worship today, we once again thank you for the blessing that we have of being together to worship. And we give you praise and honor and glory in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Psalms 147, verse 1, it says, Praise the Lord, how good it is to sing praises to our God, how pleasant and fitting to praise Him. So let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let the joy of our King rise among us. So let us rise, let us stand up, and let's sing, let us rise. Let the songs of the 
just stay standing? Because I can't really sit sitting down for this next song either. Um, Darlene Check became a Christian at the age of 15. But by, night, by the age of 28, she was an, an experience, experiencing a frightfully dark time. Tax burdens were extremely high. There seemed to be no way out of the situation, save for the hand of God. So as Christians encouraged, as Christians we are encouraged to do in times of per perplexity, I can't talk, and fear. She turned to the Word of God, Psalms 96, and during the reading of the psalm, her mind was completely centered on the Heavenly Father, and so she slipped onto an old bench of an old piano her parents had given her when she was only five years old. Her hands fell on the keys. She began to improvise, not playing anything in particular. She suddenly found herself singing a song which flowed from her heart and reading of the Psalm 96. She continued to sing it again and again, and her depression lifted, and her faith and joy in the Lord returned. She had realized that the message of her song was true. It begins, My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. Let's sing that together now.
mustard, let's see, what is this? Mustard platter, plaster poultice to her eyes when she was only six weeks old, rendering her totally blind. But even in her childhood, childhood she realized she had a special gift. And she often said, I have a jewel. Content. So when she was only nine years of age, she wrote, Oh, what a happy soul I am. Although I cannot see, I am resolved that in this world, contented will I be. How many blessings I enjoy that other people don't. We weep and sigh because I'm blind. I cannot and I won't. Bless well, that for me to read that. So but let's all sing together, blessed assurance.
And uh, I want to talk to you uh, this morning a little bit about, uh, about work. And we're going to begin at the beginning of the Bible, where it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So God, from the very beginning, did something very special. And in the first chapter of Genesis, as you know, I'm sure, it goes through all of the days of creation. And God created each one, day one, day two, right on down through, through day six. And then it says on the seventh day, he rested from his work. And then when we look at chapter two, we find something interesting. We find that the heavens and earth were finished, and all the host of them, and on the seventh day, God finished his, say it, work that he had done. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy because on it God rested from all his work that he had done in creation. So we see right from the very beginning of time, in God's creation, we have work introduced to us work. So I want to talk about work a little bit this morning. Let's, uh, let's look at the definition of work as we understand it in our modern day uh, understanding of things. Work is defined as the product of the net force acting on a body and the distance moved in the direction of the force. This, the formula, W equals F times D. And the amount of work can be, we can be uh, expressed in what we refer to as joules, the unit of work as joules. So that's the, that's the uh, physics definition of work. It has a very specific meaning for uh, the, sci the science world. W equals F times D. Well, work can be done by you as well as on you. Are you the pusher or the pushy? So you can have it done on you or you can do it to something. And then it says, work is a measure of expended energy. Work makes you tired. Now, here we get an interesting question. We read in Genesis chapter 2 that God worked and that he ceased from his work and that he rested on the seventh day. So, does that mean that God gets tired? Well, in our understanding of total scripture and of what we understand of God, we know that God is omnipotent, those three big om words, omnipotent, omnipresent, and omniscient. Omnipotent means that he is all-powerful. Omnipresent means he is everywhere at once. Omniscience means that he is all knowing. And so we know that God being all that he is does not get tired in the, in the manner in which we get tired. When it says he rested from his work, it means he, he ceased from his work. He finished his work and he ceased from his work and he rested on the seventh day, setting a pattern for mankind, for us. And then also we need to understand that devices and things that we have, machines, help us to make work easier. 
It's the simplest machines devised were like levers and, and ramps and wheels. That's kind of where mankind developed those things until we have today a lot of, of uh, leverage to help us with our work. I think of the, the computer, for example. It's amazing how the computer and the internet has helped us with work. Um, I remember years ago when, when I was uh, studying in my theological studies and I had a, one, of my, one of my professors uh, told me, that told us that, that the sign of a good minister, all good ministers have to have an enormous library. You've got to have an enormous library. And uh, so, you know, being one, wanting to be a good minister, I started collecting books. And my father was a minister and I inherited all of his books. I had a couple other individuals that I inherited books from. And I had a huge library. When I was pastoring at the Federated Church of Mitchell, I had a whole room downstairs in the basement that was my library. It was rack after rack and shelf after shelf of books, books, books. I have whittled that down so that nowadays I don't have very many books. But I have a lot of books on Kindle stored on my electronic devices because that's the direction it's gone. Now, you know, I'm a person, I am absolutely thrilled to be living in the day and age in which I live because I have always been a techie type of person. I love the technology. I love the, the ability, just think of the ability that we have with a computer. How we can how we can print things up and, and just look at the bulletin look at the flyers we can make look at all of those things that years ago I just I wish I could do that but you had to take it to a printer you know you had to you had to take it to a printer then they would make it up and they would make the make the the sheets and stuff they had to do and they would run them through the the type they do the typesetting and all that kind of stuff you you couldn't do the beautiful work that we can do nowadays by just sitting down on our computer and then hitting print. It's awesome. I love it. And it makes it so much easier and fun, enjoyable for me to prepare my sermons. My, my sermons, for example, uh, when I, on this slide you're seeing on the screen, when I was wanting to research work, so I go to Google and I I wanted a slide that talked about work, and so I hit images, and then I put in the word work, and a whole bunch of different things came up, and I was able to pick from all of the things that are on there, the particular slide that I wanted to use. You can put almost anything into Google and search for it and come up with something useful. And it's fun. It makes putting together presentations enjoyable, and I, I enjoy it very much and so all of these things have helped to make our work easier how many of you uh, out there uh, and I don't want to find I don't want to sound chauvinistic when I say this but how many of you ladies out there really enjoy your washing machines huh how many of you remember the days when you had the old tub with the thing that would go around and then you had to wring out the clothes through the wringer and all of that? Do you remember that? Or, or maybe even some of you had to use the old scrub board, you know? But boy, isn't it nice to take those clothes and throw them in that washing machine and add the soap and turn it on and a few minutes later, it's, it's all, they're all washed. There's a lot of wonderful stuff uh, time-saving devices that help us with our work. Well, when God created Adam and Eve, uh, He had created all the earth. It says that he, he, His work was finished, and part of that was He created man, and then He created Eve. And then what did He say to them? He said He took them in the, put them in the garden, and He told them to work it and keep it. They were to take care of the garden. What a job. Can you imagine what it would be like to take care of a garden 
where there you didn't have to worry about uh, mosquitoes or thorns or anything like that. They didn't have that kind of stuff until the, the, the curse came, until sin came into the world. I, I just wonder what it was like. I wonder what did they do? You know, someday when I get to heaven, I'm going to look up Adam and I'm going to ask him, what was it like in the Garden of Eden? He's probably going to tell me, well, it's a lot like this. <laughs> you know, I, I, it must have been awesome. And what, what they lost when sin entered into their lives, what they lost was, was tremendous. But work, God gave mankind the concept of work, and that is what he expects us to do. So, our work, whether or not we enjoy our work, and whether or not we find satisfaction in our work, has to do with one thing in particular. It has to do with attitude. Attitude. Have you ever seen this before? This little deal? This is amazing. I mean, this is just really amazing. If you assign all the letters of the alphabet, the numbers, like one, two, three, four, five, you'll find like one is A and 20, uh, T is, is a 20, and and so forth, and then and you, you add all those letters, all those numbers up with the word attitude, you have an equal 100%. You see it? Isn't that awesome? How in the world? It is our attitude toward life and work that makes our life 100%. It is our attitude. Now, the Japanese have their own attitude toward work, and this is a, this is a little paragraph about how Jap the Japanese view their, atti their you know, attitude toward work. So just read that for a little bit, and you know, you'll get the gist of, of what their work is all about. You know. But I saw one little clip that said that Japanese attitude toward work is, if one can do it, I can do it. If no one can do it, I must do it. Isn't that a good attitude toward work? The Middle Eastern attitude is, Wallahi, if, if one can do it, let him do it. If no one can do it, then, Ya Habibi, how can I do it? <laughs> Quite a difference in attitude toward work. So this morning, I want to uh, just share with you some positive attitudes that will help us to succeed based on what the scripture says that we should uh, be doing and how our attitude should be toward work. First of all, let's consider that we need to surround our people with our, our lives with positive people. We need to surround our lives with people who have a positive attitude because attitude makes all the difference in the world. In 1 Corinthians 15, it says, don't be misled, bad company corrupts good character. People with bad attitudes corrupt the attitude in the whole community. So attitude is is everything when it comes to us working together for the kingdom of Christ. We need to have a positive attitude. We need to surround ourselves with people with, with positive attitudes. And if you are a person who does not have a positive attitude, then keep, stay with me, okay? Because hopefully by the time we get through here, maybe you'll kind of see how you can develop a positive attitude. Number two, here we go, fill your mind with positive input. I have to, literally, I have to tell myself this every day because there is so much negative stuff out there that it can drag you down. I have, to, I have to deliberately make myself stop looking at the news. 
Stop looking at all of those little things that come up in your email that, that are talking about all the stuff that's going on in the world. I have to deliberately make myself stop looking at that stuff. We need to fill our minds with positive input. And, and that takes a deliberate action. We have to deliberately reject all the negative and move toward the positive deliberately and look for things that are good. One of my favorite verses in the Bible. I have several favorite verses in the Bible. Um, I never like it when, when somebody asks me, what is your favorite verse in the Bible? Because it, it sounds kind of like a cop-out when you say, well, I have a lot of favorite, but it's not. You know, I just have a lot of favorite verses in the Bible. This is one of them. Whatever is true, read it with me. Whatever is true, whatever is honest, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, think on these things. Now, I want to tell you something. In this world in which we live in, uh, communication is so instant. And we, we hear constantly the news coming our way, and, and it's almost always negative. It's almost always bad news. We hear about this murder there, this accident there, this catastrophe there, and it's just constantly bombarding us. We need to understand that we need to be informed, yes, and we need to realize that we live in a world where there's a lot of things happening. But what happens is that if you dwell on those things continually, you begin to internalize them. And it begins to affect you when the reality of it is no matter what you think about what's going on in the world with all the evil, it's not going to change the fact that there's evil going on all over the world. And it will continue to go on. So why not internalize within yourself things that are good and honest and pure and true and lovely and the kinds of thoughts that will lift you up and lift up others around you. So fill your mind with positive, positive in, input. Third, control your language. Control your language. There are... There is so much uh, complaining and, and bad language going on. You can't go, you can't go out any place without hearing people with filthy mouths. You just can't. So it, it, it's it's a kind of thing that that it can rub off if you expose yourself to too much to it. And you need to be uh, need to understand that having a positive and a good attitude, the attitude of Christ means that you're going to control your language and it's something that all of us need to be concerned about. If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. And so I, I believe that we all need to be thinking about, about, about what we are saying and who we are saying it to and how we are saying it, to control what we are saying and keep our words to be encouraging and uh, lifting up others instead of uh, tearing them down. Give encouraging words to people. Control your language. We do have that ability to do that. Number four, create a routine for the day. Now this is, this is one that, that uh, might be kind of hard to do for some people. I am not, I'll tell you right now, I am not the type of person that can live by a real strict routine. Uh, I, just, I just don't because I found out a long time ago, if I set myself up on a real strict routine, I, I'm not going to follow it anyway. You know, something's going to happen that's going to change that. I like to be flexible. And there are certain things that, of course, as a pastor, that are routine for me to do, that I, that I have to do. And the same thing is for you. And I think it's a good idea for us to, for, to rise in the day and to kind of plan the day out a little bit. And uh, think of some things that you want to accomplish, being, uh, being realistic. Some of the things that you want to accomplish for that day. 
that does a couple of things. It uh, helps you to accomplish those things. And number two, it helps you to feel good about yourself at the end of the day. When you know that you've accomplished those things that you set out to do. I always feel good. If I, if I set up something, say, well, today, this is the day I'm going to do this. If I accomplish that, by the end of the day, I feel like I've accomplished something. And it makes you feel good. It helps with your attitude. So when you set up a little bit of a routine and kind of have a sense of direction for the day, your attitude is moving you in the right direction to get those things done. Number five, oh, there's a scripture I want to throw in on this one. It's 1 Corinthians 14, 40 that says, but in all things, all things should be done decently and in order. This was, of course, the admonition that the Apostle Paul was giving to the church at Corinth who kind of gotten out of line in some of their worship practices. They had, uh, it specifically it was directed for people speaking in tongues and apparently there were those who were just jumping up and speaking in tongues and, and there was just a lot of people doing that and people weren't doing things in, a, in an orderly manner. And so he was admonishing him to do that. And I think that we do need order in our life in order for us to be able to maintain a good positive attitude. In fact, if you, you don't have some order in your life, it can make you frustrated. And that certainly, certainly doesn't help your attitude, does it, to be frustrated. Okay, number five, be nice to other people. Be nice to other people. Uh, let's face it, there's a lot of grumps out there. Uh, whenever you go to, whenever you go to the store, you go to Walmart, you know, you, you see all kinds of people. And I always like to, I always like to try to get eye contact from going down an aisle or something, someone's coming toward me. I always like to get eye contact with people, you know, and be friendly with them. And uh, some, of them, some of them will, and you smile at them, and they smile back. And that, always, that always kind of makes my day when somebody smiles at me. And uh, others won't even give you eye contact. You know, they're just, they're in their own little world. Listen, if there is any thing that Christians ought to be doing, it is being nice to people. It is showing kindness to people and being nice. So think about that. Am I a nice person? Am I nice? And if you, if you look at that and say, hmm, maybe I'm not as nice as I could be. This is a good admonition, admonition to follow. Jesus said, this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. And then the Apostle Paul wrote, be kind to one another, tender hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. This verse right here is a verse that leaves us with no excuse for harboring unforgiveness against somebody. We are to forgive one another as God in Christ forgave you. If God could forgive me through what Jesus did upon the cross for my sins, then I tell you, I should be able to forgive anybody for what they do to me. So important. Be nice. Be nice to other people. And then number six, carry a positive attitude with you like a survival kit or tool. How many, how many of you guys in here have a have a uh, pocket knife in your pocket. Yep, see there's quite a few of you. Well, why do you have that in there? It's part of your survival tools, right? I mean, you never know when you might need to use that. Let's see, what would all the ladies have? Well, won't go there. But... <laughs> They have a whole purse full, right? <laughs> K 
carry a positive attitude with you as you would a survival tool, something in your purse or something in your pocket that's important for you to get through the day that you might that you might need. Have it with you, carry it with you, that positive attitude. Because it really is an important survival tool, isn't it? A positive attitude will make all the difference in the world to how uh, your day goes. In Psalm 40, verse 16, may all who come to you be glad and joyful. May all who are thankful for your salvation always say, how great is the Lord. Always ready, that positive attitude, how great is the Lord. It makes all the difference. Finally, I want to close with this scripture about work. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. As working for the Lord, not for men. We don't do it to impress people. We do it because we love the Lord and we're working for him. God worked to create this beautiful world that we have today. He gave work to Adam and Eve. The very first that was their primary thing was to take care of the Garden of Eden. And you and I have the work that God has given to us. And the way that we approach it, our attitude makes all the difference in the world. As we prepare our hearts for communion this morning, I want us to sing one verse of Give of Your Best to the Master. It goes right along with that verse, doesn't it? Give of Your Best to the Master, hymn 540. And uh, as we sing, I'd like to have the deacons and your families to come to the altar. I will serve you first, and then you can help serve the congregation. I do want to mention, uh, sometimes I just assume everybody knows this, but that isn't a good assumption, that we do serve wine for our communion. The center ring of every tray, that ring right in the middle, has grape juice, if you prefer grape juice. So let's worship the Lord together. Let's stand together now and sing, give of your best to the master. The deacons and families come.
take and eat. And as often as you do so, do it in remembrance of me. also after supper he took the cup saying this is the new covenant in my blood which is for you as often as you drink it do so in remembrance of me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join our voices and saying, God be with you till we meet again, and Lord bless you today. Amen. 